Well, hello all. I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> Through all the rain and uh, craziness that's going on. Uh, this is uh, moto camping at Coda again. Uh, and it's raining again. <laughs> Every time I've come up here for the last, I don't know how many times, uh, it's been a crazy weather problem. But today this should blow out. We're hoping it should uh, clear up by about 2 this afternoon. It's kind of what the forecast is saying. And uh, uh, it's going to take it a while to dry out, but at least uh, uh, no more heavy thunderstorm and lightning. We're getting rocked right now by 25 mile an hour winds and a lot of lightning and a lot of rain. Uh, last night, yesterday was really nice. Uh, we started getting sprinkles about 10.30 at night. It didn't really start this nonsense until uh, I think it was 4 or 5 a.m. this morning. But, yeah, so I'm sitting around killing time, offloading video footage, and uh, working on something just to keep myself occupied. But this is uh, camp for right now. I don't want to get out in this. There's no point in it. I've got all the rain gear to sit outside and weather it out if I wanted to, but with the lightning, eh, it's not really a good idea. The tent is holding up well. I've only got one little leak. I am getting some very minor drips, but I think they're coming through the uh, uh, little vent peaks up in the corner because we're getting driving rain coming from the side. But it's just a couple of little drip drops every now and then. Sorry for my dishes and all the mess in here, but I had to grab everything and bring it in rather quickly last night. So anyway, this is uh, wet camping in uh, at Coda. Oh goody. The cub is sitting right out there, just outside the tent. It does not have a rain cover. I didn't bring one because I thought mistakenly that I would be able to keep my tarp up and just, you know, have the bike sitting under the tarp if it's going to be light rain. This is not light rain. And it's got a lot of wind with it. You can see the tent getting knocked around. Uh, so my tarp tried to take off and fly last night. I didn't break any stakes off like last time when I was here, but uh, I caught it just as things were going sideways. Rolled it up and shoved it in the dry bag, and I'll wait until things uh, calm down a little bit. Let's see if I can redeploy that. Yeehaw! <laughs> Good stuff. But I'm dry for the most part, so the uh, REI half dome is doing well. I am staked out pretty well outside. I've. Uh, I staked the corners of the tent, obviously, and then I staked out the fly on both ends uh, and the sides, uh, so I don't get collapsed. When I was up here for the Blanc GT, the wind was so strong, I was getting 40 mile an hour, 35, 40 mile an hour steady winds, and it was caving in the whole tent. The uh, poles over here inverted, and the tent was down here, like this. There you go. Oh! Yeah, these are 40 mile an hour gusts right here. I hope the cub stays upright. I can see the tires of it, but this is bad wind. So, this, uh, gee, huh? Wow. This uh, tent is not great for heavy wind loads like this. The uh, structure just won't withstand it. it. The poles bend down and turn inside out. This is trying to right now. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down my laptop. Cover it up. Oh, yep, see, there it is. 
it's all just weathered out. Oh my god. I don't know, I might take off here. I'm staked down pretty good on the corners. This will be good 3D footage, huh? Oh, yeah. I made a uh, parking stand for the Cub out of two regular uh, kickstand pucks. I just Siamese two of them together with some paracord and set them about five and a half inches apart. So the Cub has got a little more stable footing uh, in this soft muddy clay, it'll fall over, uh, it sinks in and tries to tip. That's why I want a side stand on the tub. Well, this is going to suck. I hope this calms down. I'm getting a cramp in my shoulder. I need to reach out there and grab my boots. They're under the vestibule, but they're getting wet. Let go of the tent for any length of time. Oh yeah, it's getting wet out here. I am gonna drop this uh, cover here. If the tent will cooperate with me. Cooperate. Not going to give me much extra water protection, but anything's better than nothing at this point. Yeehaw! My dirty dishes. Didn't have time to wash them up this morning after breakfast. Okay. Well, let's see how this goes. See, there's that. This wind is pretty stout, and I'm staked out really strong. I've got three guy outs on that outside uh, at the mid span on each uh, leg, and then in the center, I'm tied out as well. But the poles just aren't quite strong enough to withstand these heavy wind loads. Guess maybe I need to invest in a mountaineering tent for Coda. Last few times I've been up here, this is the story. Always crazy winds. I don't even know if any of this audio is coming out. Put my helmet away from that mesh. I don't want the helmet tearing anything up. Yeah, I'm getting wet. It's blowing in under the fly over here. Oh, my neck is wet. Yeah, it's blowing through. It's coming this way. <laughs> thermal over there. I don't want it wet. Anybody else? Alright. Weather the storm. Let's see what we get. I've been tracking the, uh, the storm activity. I use an app called uh, My Radar. I don't know if that shows up on the camera, my radar. Uh, it's a paid app if you get the one without the ads and all the nonsense. But it's got high res uh, Nexrad radar, full motion 3D radar stuff. Uh, zoom it up a little bit and uh, show what our situation looks like right now. So that's what I'm in the middle of right now. Looks like I got a little bit of water on that lens. But it's, there's mist blowing around in here. The, the wind is so strong. Let's see if I have one of my lens cloths and I'll clean that up. What do you know? What do you know? Magic fiber. All right. Well, maybe that gust front has gone away. Pardon me while I wipe you off. 
Let's see how this one goes. All right. Chaos, I've misplaced one of my chest rigs. I have no idea. This is my standalone chest rig, but I don't know where the one is that goes on the. Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't misplace it. It's still on the bag. I was going to say this is the one that attaches to the backpack. Got it. <sighs> now, the fun part is I've got to go outside after this calms down a little bit and survey the damage bang the stakes back in because I'm sure they're going to be lifted out a bit from all the yanking and tugging and uh, the muddy, wet, soggy. Uh, the problem in that is every time you get in and out, you're making more of a mess. Your boots, the tent, everything else. So I try to minimize my in and out when it's this wet and muddy and nasty. Uh, just makes managing the muddy crap on the gear so much harder. I think part of the problem with Coda is the the terrain. Everywhere that you park, uh, all the camping areas, everything's pretty elevated. And if it's not elevated, it's in a wide open plain, so there's nothing to break the wind. Uh, just get these crazy straight line winds that rip through here uh, and of course the track is down a little bit and all this area is up high so that doesn't help anything either camping out in the woods or somewhere generally you've got trees to slow down the wind and it doesn't get quite as crazy as this and this uh, I'll do some video outside in a little bit but the composition of this dirt and whatnot out here is clay, predominantly. Uh, it's concrete. You walk in it, every step you take, it gloms to your boots or your shoes. You lift it up, you take another step, and more gloms on and more gloms on, and you end up with platform high boots, and that's not a joke. You end up with uh, four or five inches thick worth of this mud, and it just keeps building and building, so you have to scrape your boots off, whack them off, you know, get everything torn off of there and it doesn't like to come off of anything. Are we done? Uh, we're not done yet. Ha, that's a pretty good uh, image right there. Let me zoom that up and show you that. We are right in the middle of two storm cells or two uh, disturbances, the blue dot is us. So we're right in the middle of it. <laughs> it's on both sides of us, uh, which means that one over here on this side is probably going to uh, come over and pay us a visit in a second. see what's coming up behind it. Yeah, it looks like a calm spot behind it. Normally when I'm camping in the woods uh, or state parks or anything like that, I bring a lightning detector as well. Particularly when I'm hammock camping, uh, not really. There, you know, there's nothing I can really do about a lightning situation, but it's good to be aware of it. Uh, or at least, it's peace of mind for my part, anyway. Uh, when you're tethered to trees, trees are the lightning rods, and they're going to be the first things that get hit. So, the lightning detector that I have, I think it's uh, it's not Accurite. It's something. I'll link it in the video. Uh, it's got a pretty good range, I think 40 miles or so, uh, and it does uh, strike detection, tells you approximately how close it is. 
and uh, it keeps count of all the lightning strikes. It beeps. There's an alarm. So if I'm sleeping, uh, I'll hang that uh, lightning detector off of my ridge line and just turn it on, go to sleep. And if I hear it beeping uh, in the middle of the night, I know that something's coming. So at least that gives me a little bit of a heads up, and I can go out and bring my uh, tarp down a little bit closer for wind and rain protection. So just to know that something's coming my way. <sighs> Alright, well I'm going to end this video. It's 15, 16 minutes at this point. Um, this 3D footage is brutal to edit and uh, encode. It takes about two hours for every five minutes of video. So it's rough. Uh, okay. Looks like this part of the storm is done.